Georgia, the Peach State, a haven for some of the most popular stock car drivers ever. Bill and Chase Elliott have put their stamp on NASCAR history. But what if I told you that the greatest driver from the state of Georgia never made a single start in NASCAR, yet is still a stock car racing icon? A driver whose career and life came to a swift and stunning end, one that reads like something from a movie script. Today we're taking a trip down memory lane to explore the life and career of Lloyd C., a forgotten legend of the primitive years of stock car racing. Lloyd C. was born in 1919 in Dawsonville, Georgia, about a month before the beginning of Prohibition. Needless to say, like many families in the South, the C. family participated in the practice of bootlegging, the production and sale of the now illegal alcohol. Moonshiners, as they came to be known, formed the early basis of the sport of stock car racing. You know, there's this myth that says that some of NASCAR's early stars were involved in the transportation of untaxed adult beverages, moonshine. Well, uh, as, as our boss, Mr. Kelly, says, NASCAR did not beget moonshine, nor did moonshine beget NASCAR. There were some of the early competitors that were involved in that business, and uh, those guys were running for their life. The technology of NASCAR race cars, the high-performance engines, the heavy-duty suspension, all that sort of thing, tires, wider wheels, stiffer springs, all that came about because these drivers who would moonlight, run in moonshine, uh, they were running for their lives. They were trying to outrun the revenuers. They knew that if they lost that race, they were going to go to jail. So uh, that technology kind of came about and found its way into NASCAR. And then once the cars were on the track, uh, then that, that uh, technology developed even more. But uh, you know, the, the combination of stock car racing and moonshine probably goes back to about the mid to late 1930s in the, uh, the hills of North Georgia, around Atlanta, and through the Carolinas. NASCAR was founded in 1947, so there was, there was a pretty good history to that sort of activity when NASCAR was founded. Once Prohibition ended at the federal level in 1933, bootleggers now had these fancy souped up cars ready to go, waiting to be used once more. Instead of outrunning the police in the middle of the night, these men got together at tracks carved out of the dirt and tested each other's machinery in a fight to see whose car was the fastest. From then on, stock car racing was born, and America had a homegrown motorsport of its own, a far cry from the aristocratic Grand Prix races in Europe or the glamorous scenes of pre-war Indianapolis. Despite the federal end of prohibition, many states and counties in the South continued to outlaw alcohol sales. The C family continued in the moonshine business, but now, young Lloyd could get behind the wheel and prove his mettle. He had been born into a racing family. One cousin, Roy Hall, was a three-time national stock car champion in the pre-NASCAR era. Another cousin, Raymond Parks, used his bootlegging money to field cars for Hall, C, and even won the first two NASCAR championships as a car owner later on. When Lloyd was old enough, he took up the responsibility of driving for the family, not only on the track, but also on the back roads, evading law enforcement. One deputy described C by saying he was without a doubt the best automobile driver of this time. He was absolutely fearless and an excellent driver on those dusty dirt roads. I caught him eight times and had to shoot his tires off every time. He even reportedly paid speeding fines in advance. That's how dedicated he was to his duty of driving fast. Eventually, by the time he turned 18, this talent began transferring over to the racetrack. Parks entered him in big races alongside Roy Hall, and the trio was incredibly successful in the growing sport. Parks recalled later that C put his heart and life into racing. According to the Georgia Racing Hall of Fame, C won the first 100-mile race run at the Lakewood Speedway in Atlanta, Georgia. He also won in Allentown, Pennsylvania, High Point, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, and Daytona Beach, Florida. He once won three prestigious races over a period of nine days. C scored wins at Daytona in 1940 and 1941, famously bicycling his car on two wheels in the north turn. With his career now being 80 years gone, all we can go off to judge C's driving ability are these surviving testimonies. Since he drove before NASCAR's founding, it's difficult to find concrete proven statistics from his career in any meaningful way. Despite this, his talent did catch the eye of a businessman in Daytona Beach. Bill France claimed that C was the best pure race driver I ever saw. Now mind you, this is from a man who witnessed Richard Petty, David Pearson, Dale Earnhardt, and the rest of the legends we know and love. From the sound of it, Lloyd was a once-in-a-lifetime talent. His driving ability developed running shine, and it developed quickly at an extremely young age. Bootlegging had built the perfect race car driver, as it had for many men in the 1930s. Unfortunately, the practice of bootlegging also spelled C's ultimate demise. Despite his growth in stock car racing, it didn't pay well. 
It was really just a hobby and a way to make quick cash before Bill France stepped in and created NASCAR in 1947. The C family continued to run shine into 1941. On Labor Day of that year, Lakewood Speedway near Atlanta held a big stock car event. Lloyd C., the big star, was not there. He ran late and missed qualifying, as he had been in High Point, North Carolina the day before for another race, one that he won. Having arrived late, C. was forced to start at the back. Despite this, he took the lead on lap 35 and overcame a fight with Bob Flock for the win and another $450 in his pocket. He had won three races in 15 days and was on top of the racing world in his area. The following day, September 2, 1941, he was at his brother Jim's house when yet another cousin, Woodrow Anderson, came over to confront Lloyd and Jim. His grievance was about a load of sugar used for moonshine, with Anderson claiming that C had charged the purchase to Anderson's account. What happened next isn't particularly clear, but the argument heated up and Anderson mortally wounded Lloyd C with one shot. Just like that, stock car racing's brightest star was gone at the age of 21. A senseless act of violence considering Lloyd had just pocketed $450 from the Lakewood race and could have paid up if he was genuinely in the wrong. If anything, this story serves to highlight the fact that bootleggers, while romanticized somewhat today, were criminals at the end of the day. Members of the family plied their trade in shady business, and unfortunately that shady business took Lloyd C. from us way too soon. Despite his short career, Lloyd C.'s impact on stock car racing cannot be understated. He paved the way for future racers and helped shape the sport into what it is today. He was a part of the first real team in stock car racing. His aggressive driving style, fearless attitude, and raw car control resonated in drivers who came after him, like Cale Yarborough, Darrell Waltrip, and Tony Stewart. His success as a teenager was something that wouldn't be seen again for over 60 years. It took until the mid-2000s for teenagers to find success in high-level stock car racing with names like Kyle Busch. By all accounts, Lloyd C. was an anomaly in many ways. He was both way ahead of his time, yet perfectly suited for the era in which he lived. Lloyd C.'s story is a reminder of the rich history of stock car racing and the men who paved the way for the growth of the sport as a popular pastime in America. Despite technically never starting a single NASCAR race, C. undoubtedly had a big influence on many aspiring racers that watched him compete. I hope you enjoyed learning about this forgotten legend, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and place your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.